so the linear mapping technique that has been discussed will be used to derive systolic arrays for FIR filter and we have just seen the dependence graph for the FIR filter y n equal to w naught x n plus w one x n minus one plus w two x n minus two. So this was the dependence graph three for this three tap FIR filter and uh, it is having regular nodes with input w that is coefficient in the horizontal direction input x that is in vertical direction top to bottom moving upwards and it computes output y and propagates it to the bottom right and the vector for w can be given by a column matrix 1 0 and w transpose is 1 0 a row matrix the vector for x is a column matrix that is 0 1 and this transpose is a row matrix that and the output vector is also a column matrix given by a value 1 minus 1 so now we have to map this space representation into a space time representation by properly choosing the projection vector processor space vector and scheduling vector so we will start with design b1 as mentioned in the textbook and it is in this design the inputs are broadcasted results are moving and weight stays so this will be clear after we will derive this design so let the projection vector d is chosen as 1 and 0 okay. and then the processor space vector should be orthogonal to this projection vector so one of the possible value is 0 and 1 and scheduling vector can be 1 and 0 this sk into d should not be equal to 0 and this is pretty much clear that sk into d will not be equal to 0 it will be equal to 1 so this node i comma j in the dependence graph it can be denoted by i transpose i and j so we have to map this node okay and uh, this can be mapped to processor given by pt i this node i t i transpose can be map to processor given by the product of p transpose into i that is 0 1 vector multiplied by i j vector and this is j itself so this means that all the nodes on a horizontal line are mapped to the same processor in our space time representation the j axis corresponds to vertical line and the horizontal axis corresponds to time okay so having a horizontal line in this axis means the value of j is fixed this means that all the nodes on a horizontal line are mapped to the same processor and scheduling time will be given by
or you can say execution time product of s transpose into sorry, so this is the product of vector 1 0 and i which is this is essentially i so this nodes corresponds to i equal to 0 these nodes corresponds to i equal to 1 and this three nodes corresponds to i equal to 2 so in the space time graph the nodes with a value of i will be executed at time i means these three nodes will be executed at 0 cycle this three nodes will be executed at first cycle this three nodes will be executed in second cycle and this three nodes will be executed in the fourth cycle to calculate the hardware utilization efficiency we have to calculate the product of s transpose d this is given by ergo vector 10 and column vector 10 that is not so hardware utilization efficiency is 1 upon mod of d the product of scheduling vector transpose of scheduling vector and projection vector that is 1 that is 100 percent so now we have to perform edge mapping so this three fundamental edges the create edge input edge and the result edge that needs to be mapped to corresponding edges in the systolic array so for an edge e in the space representation we have to introduce edge in the systolic array and that edge will be p transpose e and the weight of the edge will be given by s transpose e okay so this p transpose e give direction okay, and this gives the weight of that edge so we have three edges in our dependence graph weight input and result I have already discussed their orientations value of p transpose is 0 and 1 okay so p transpose multiplied by weight 1 0 gives 0 and s transpose e the value of s transpose is 1 and 0 so s transpose e will give you 1 okay now for input edge p transpose e means 0 1 multiplied by this this row vector multiplied by this column vector gives 1 okay so 0 into 1 0 so 0 plus 1 into 0 plus 1 into 1 so this gives 1 okay I believe you know this multiplication and s transpose e will give you 0 and for the edge corresponding to result p transpose e is minus 1 and s transpose e is 1 so now we will translate this number into actual hardware representation and uh, one way of doing that is to draw the block diagram so the number of processes in the block diagram will be given by this factor pt into y that is j okay and the value of j is 3 it can be seen from the dependence graph that j can take only three values w0 w1 w2 so based on this information so the number of processor calculated was j and the value of j is 3 so i will draw three blocks block 1 block 2 and block 3 representing the processors and the direction of weight is 
zero. This means that it is not moving. So weight is not moving. So weight is at the same point. Okay. In some other architecture, you will see that the weight is moving. So that's why making a edge like this. Otherwise, there is no sense of making the edge like this. Just to have a generalized architecture, we are drawing an edge that starts and at ends at the same point with delay d associated with it so all the three processes will have weight that is not moving and delay is associated with it the input value the input edge in this architecture is moving in right direction plus one means horizontally right and delay associated is zero and, and the corresponding result edge is moving in the negative direction minus one means horizontally left each edge is associated with one delay okay. so this corresponds to a known architecture given by epson a multiplier adder this section is then propagated to the second processor and to the multiplier and adder and the result is propagated in the left direction with one delay and this input is then transferred to the next processor with zero delay and the output is moved to left with one delay and the weights are being provided to the multiplier this corresponds to w0 this corresponds to w1 and this corresponds to w2 so the combination of adder and multiplier corresponds to this processor okay so you can see that the processing elements are similar and each processing element is having one multiplier and one adder and this is known as direct form 2 and also known as data broadcast structure so now we can derive the space time representation that consists of two axes that is t and axis j prime j prime is equal to j the vertical axis is seen as of the dependence graph and this axis t is given by the shedding vector s transpose into y that is i so the value of this processor vector is j this means that all the nodes on the horizontal line will be mapped to the same processor so the nodes on the horizontal line will be mapped to the same processor so this means that the weight wi should appear at the processor at the same spatial coordinates 
from this architecture it can be seen that input is broadcasted to all the processor at the same time okay. so in the space time diagram we can represent this by a horizontal axis okay, so input x0 is available to all the processors at the same time zero next input x1 is available to all the processor at time 1 x2 is available to all the processors at time 2 likewise and at this point this intersection gives the computation w0 x0 this corresponds to output y0 this corresponds to x0 w1 and this corresponds to w0 x1 so this is output y1 this is w2 x0 w1 x1 w0 x2 this corresponds to output y1 so the so the output y i appear at the processor at different space and time okay so so the output is said to be moving